man. Matthew has a way of writing to uh, his readers and talking about how he, he uses a lot of parables in his, in his gospels. And we're still in chapter 21, and we've been in chapter 21 for almost four weeks now. Why? Because there's a lot of parables, it's a lot of teaching moments, and it's a lot of opportunity for us to grow, to contemplate on his message and what God is calling us to do. So let's take a step back just a few weeks ago. Um, in Matthew, um, Matthew, well, yeah, this was in Matthew 18, actually, four weeks ago, where we started talking about uh, how many times do we forgive? How many times should we forgive? And he says, you should forgive 70 times, seven times, because of continuous of forgiveness. Forgive, 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 and never let, never stop forgiving your brothers and sisters in the same way that he has never stopped forgiving us of our sins. Every time we go to confession, every time we repeat the same sin over and over and over again, he continues to forgive us. And so for us, it is called, he's called us to continue to forgive. Sadly enough, what happens is pride creeps into our lives sometimes when we, when we, when we don't want to forgive our brothers and sisters. That person really hurt me. That person took something from me. I'm no longer the same person and I cannot forgive X, Y, Z person. I hear that often in confession. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I'm, they're asking for forgiveness. But then they can't forgive the person that has offended them. It's hard sometimes to forgive the person that has offended us. It's really hard. Divorce doesn't make it easy. Accidentally killing somebody doesn't make it easy. Hurting somebody hard in a hard way doesn't make it easy. And so what happens to us? Pride comes into our hearts and says, I'm not going to forgive this individual. I can't forgive this individual and do not ask me to forgive this individual because it's something that I cannot do. Well, that's wrong. That's pride. Because God gives us the ability to forgive as well. The more we forgive, the stronger that we become. The more that we can see his path. And so that was four weeks ago. Then. Three weeks ago, we heard from Matthew in um, the story about how the laborers and how we went out and Jesus, or the landowner went out to the market to look for people to work in his garden. And he found a couple of people and put them to work at 9 a.m. for a decent sized wage. And then he went back out again throughout the day, five different times. And at five o'clock, he went out again and he paid the people the same wages, the people that he hired at five o'clock versus the people that he hired at nine o'clock. And what happened? Envy creeped into the hearts of the first person, right? The person that was hired at nine o'clock. Why is it that you can pay this guy X dollar amount and us, you pay us this, the same amount? We labored, <coughs> we labored all day long. And yet you look at this individual and you hire him and you give him the exact same wage. That was envy. So what we're doing now is we're going through the seven deadly sins as we're processing through the gospel of Matthew. So envy creeps into our hearts. Then last week, what happened last week was we were able to hear the story of two boys, two sons. One who is asked to go work in the vineyard and says, no, but later repents and then goes. And the other one that says yes and says, and doesn't ever go into the, des- into the vineyard, but he does his own thing. The second, the first individual, the first son was able to repent. And so yesterday, last week, we were full of joy and full of happiness and full of excitement because we understand that when we repent, God forgives us of our sins and we can start anew. It's a new life with Christ when we go and we ask for forgiveness and we receive his forgiveness. It's a new life with him. And we were called to rejoice, to celebrate. 
Well, what happens today? We fall back into our sins all over again. Why? Because now greed is keep creeping into our hearts. Greed has kept taken over these laborers, these people that are renting from the landowner. Greed, I produced these grapes. It was me that labored and worked in the gardens. I took care of these grapes. They're mine. But really, where do the land, who owns the land, right? If it wasn't for the generosity of this landowner, you wouldn't even have a job. You wouldn't even have the ability to feed your family and your friends if it wasn't for the landowner. So here in the midst of it, we fall back down into our sins and degree. God is calling us to, or Matthew is calling us to look inside ourselves. Where do we fall short? How are we repeating the seven deadly sins over and over and over? And what is needed is a repentance. What we received last week, the ability to start anew with the Lord. God, that was me. Oh, I failed again, but you know what? I'm gonna get back up on that horse. I'm gonna get back up there and I'm gonna ask God for forgiveness and I'm gonna start anew and I'm gonna learn this time. This time, I'm gonna give as generously to the Lord as he is to me. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have the things that I have. Well, it's a lesson for all of us. These scriptures come alive in us today. God is extremely generous to us. And how are we generous to him in the things that we have received? How do we give our first fruits to the Lord? Do we simply give our leftovers to the Lord or do we give him his due, the first fruits? That's what these reflections are all about is giving our first fruits, our time, treasure, and talent. Many of us are talented in many, many gifted ways, but we bury it when we come to serving the Lord because we can't bother to give time to the Lord. Many of us have been given with wealth and yet we spend it on ourselves rather than spending it with the Lord and building the kingdom of heaven. Many of us have just time to give, and yet we say, I'd rather go and spend mindless hours playing video games than spending time helping the Lord in the kingdom of heaven. I used to be that guy. I confess it. Watching mindless hours of sports, right? Why, instead of giving my time to the Lord, and over the years, God has just really opened the hearts and the minds to see that. And slowly I left it behind. If I get to see a quarter of a football game nowadays, that's, you know, enough for me. Right? But it is about how do we give back to the Lord? How do we give our first fruits to the Lord? Not everybody was given wealth. Okay. But you were given time and talent. Use the time and talent to grow the kingdom of heaven. Give back your first fruits to the Lord. Brother and sister, God is calling all of us to look inside our hearts. How has he been generous to us? And how can we be generous in the kingdom of heaven? Amen? Amen.